E-R, November 27th, 2022. So welcome to my live today. It's been um, a couple of weeks now since I did a live. Uh, we are in Manitoba and we've been here five weeks. It's been absolutely amazing, incredible and exhausting all at the same time. And that is why, uh, like last Sunday, I was sick and so bad that I could not, I could not prepare for a, to do a live. But the week before that, we had an amazing worship night. And so, yes, it's just been amazing. And we needed to take time to worship the Lord because he's been so good and done so many incredible things here. Like all glory, all glory, all glory to God. We have baptized 58 people in the past five weeks. And so it's all him. It's his truth. It's his gospel that we simply shared. And, and it just convicted people to the heart. And these are all people, you know, that profess to be Christians, that knew God. They knew God. They knew Jesus. And but something about the gospel that was revealed to them that they didn't have or know before was most repentance. Repent and be baptized. And because of those truths that we shared with them, they repented, they got baptized into the name of Jesus, received the gift of the Holy Spirit, they were freed, they were delivered, they were healed, and amazing, amazing testimonies. You know, just the other night we had a lady who was uh, experiencing deafness in her, ears, uh, in her ears, and she was healed. She was healed, praise God. Another woman, anxiety, and as soon as she went down in the water, she came back up. It was gone. She was just just filled with joy, filled with joy. She could not believe how simple it was, how easy it was, and everything negative was gone. She was just totally set free. So praise God. Praise God for what he's doing. And we have like testimony upon testimony, you know, 58 people. So they all have their own personal testimony, which is absolutely amazing. And so we just praise the Lord for everything he's doing here. And yeah, so I want to speak about some end times prophecy. And that's what I was going to share with you last week. But anyway, it didn't work out. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I want to share with you a few different kinds of prophecies. So we have this sister and she's been receiving these messages for, for a while now. She's new in the Lord. Uh, I think she was baptized last January, so not quite a year yet. And, and she's been receiving amazing things and she hasn't even read the whole Bible. So she couldn't know these things. And, uh, but they're very, very powerful. And so, um, I'm going to share some things that she received. They may seem a little negative on the surface, but know that, you know, everything that is said here is in the Bible. These things will happen. And then I'm also going to share, um, it's a prophecy that was received by this man. His name is Tommy Hicks, and you can look it up on Google. And uh, so there's a, the text that exists about his vision that he received. So I'm going to share that with you. And the amazing thing about that is that I just happened to fall on this a few weeks ago, and he had received this vision back, I think it was 1961, and he was in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And we are in Manitoba. So I just really felt that it was God confirming what's happening here so i'm going to read it out so you can see for yourself you know if this is it and then at the end i'm going to share a few things that the lord showed me as well so it all kind of ties in together so let's just dive right into that so anyway this is the sister that we have and on october 3rd at 2 p.m she received this message and the message is storms are brewing daughter are you prepared it's going to kick off are you ready to help bring in the harvest? So for those of you who are believers, are you ready to help bring in the harvest? Time is up, daughter. It's all about to fall upon this earth. The warnings are going out on deaf ears. Nobody's heeding my calls for the imminent threat of dis destruction. They are asleep and refuse to be shaken awake by what I say. Warn them, warn them. There is no more time. Time is up, time is up, time is up. There is no more time. Return to me now so I can receive my people. The door is going to shut. There will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth and there will be tears and bitterness. Stop being caught up in delusions and distractions. Can't you see the time is now? 
Wake up, church. War, bombs, famine, it's all upon you. Do you see it? Wake up, church. The time is now. It's here. I come when you least expect it. Be ready. Be warned. Love the Father. And then she heard, my mercy is ended. And she said, I felt the urgency to get this out, and I pray you receive it in Jesus' name. Now, I know you're thinking that this is like, you know, dire, but it, it's all biblical because these things that she's talking about are things that are upon us. November 9, she says, I was listening to worship music and knitting, and then I heard the word calamity. And then I was given a vision of a huge wave. Then, as I went into my secret place, I was given another vision of myself and many people. I can't see them, but I feel them all around me because we were all looking up to the sky. It was a black night sky and there were stars and we were all looking up and I got to and I got stay focused on the heavens daughter the signs of the times are here calamity comes and so do I I'm coming daughter keep looking up stay focused and remain in me keep warning those who will listen and as I just read that about the wave I was given a vision of a huge wave I had a vision too I'm not sure if I shared it with you but I did have a vision of a wave as well. And so in my vision that I had, I think it was a dream. It was a dream and it was about three weeks ago. We were here in Manitoba. And so we were just on the beach. Uh, you know, the team and I, we were just having fun, having a picnic. And then we decided to go out in the water. And we went out a little far. And then all of a sudden, and we're still kind of like enjoying, having fun and eating. And then all of a sudden I see this humongous wave coming. And I'm like, we got to get out. We got to get out now. And so we turned around and we couldn't see the shore anymore because the swell was so big. And if you know what a swell is, it's like this. And so you go down and when you're down in the swell, you only see the wave that's on top. So we couldn't see the land anymore. And so... We, I knew the direction, so we headed that way. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it because I'm not a great swimmer. But one of the brothers like, is like, hang on to me. So I grabbed his leg, and he just swam in, and, and I went in behind him. And then we all were safely you know, brought to shore. And so that just reminds me, this is the, the, there is a wave coming. And many of us have been receiving this dream of the wave. November 16th. She has another dream the, or, uh, or word that says, The storm is upon my people. Very dark things are coming to my people. You need to be fully equipped, armored, and in my word like never before. Sound the alarm. Now is the time as heavy darkness is looming and will fall soon. My judgments are coming, and this world will be dismayed, frantic, and full of fear. Brace yourself so you won't be caught off guard or led astray. Remain in me. In prayer and fasting, daughter, so much is coming. Be ready as soon as I soon come too. I love you always, Abba Father. And then she heard the words distress, darkness, the kickoff is coming. The events are unfolding quickly, quickly, daughter. A time like never before. Jacob's troubles are at the door. The time of great distress is at the door now, daughter. Hold fast to me and remain abiding in me. I love you, the Father. And then she heard war, famine, persecution, and pestilence. Prepare. And I just want to remind you that for the past year, these are the messages that I have shared. And if you go back on my YouTube channel, you will see since last November, it's been exactly a year, the Lord had given me these messages week after week after week. Prepare for famine, prepare for persecution, prepare for war and um, spiritual warfare, all of that. Like there's tons of videos that's been put out there over the past year and specifically to prepare for all that is coming. And I really feel peace in my heart. Like I feel like I've said everything I need to say in a way about how to prepare, you know, prepare to go underground and, and all these things. And so you might want to revisit those videos that I've done read the word you know like you know like follow Jesus more than me right be in the word and and listen to him to what he has to say that's more important okay because each one of us are responsible for our own relationship with the Lord that's the most important part 
So she gets visions and dreams and warnings about the difficult end times that are coming upon the world. And I want to share with you right now a vision that this man, Tommy Hicks, had received. And um, it was July 25th, actually, 1961. And I just happened to fall on this a few weeks ago, like I said. And it says, my message begins July 25th, about 2.30 in the morning at Winnipeg, Canada. That, to me, was just a, a big flag from God because we are in Manitoba. And so I heard, he says, I had hardly fallen asleep when the vision and the revelation that God gave to me came before me. The vision came three times, exactly in detail, the morning of July 25th, 1961. I was so stirred and so moved by the revelation that this has changed my complete outlook upon the body of Christ and upon the last end time ministry. The greatest thing that the Church of Jesus Christ that has ever been given to the Church lies straight ahead. It is so hard to help men and women to realize and understand the thing that God is trying to give to His people in the end time. So remember, 1961, so 60 years ago, 61 years ago. As the vision appeared to me, after I was asleep, I suddenly found myself at a great high distance. Where I was, I do not know. But as I was looking down upon the earth, suddenly the whole earth came into view. Every nation, every kindred, every tongue came before my sight. From the east and from the west, from the north and the south. And I recognized every country and many cities that I had been in. And I was almost in fear and trembling as I beheld the sight before me. And at that moment, as the earth came into view, it began to lightning and thunder. As the lightning flashed over the face of the earth, my eyes went downwards. I was facing the north. Suddenly I beheld what looked like a giant. And as I stared and looked at it, I was almost bewildered by the sight. It was so gigantic, gigantic and so great in stature, his feet seemed to reach to the North Pole and his head to the south. Its arms were stretched from sea to sea. I could not even begin to understand whether this was a mountain or whether this be a giant. But as I watched it, I suddenly beheld this great giant. I could see it was struggling for life to even live. But his body was covered with debris from head to foot and at times this great giant would move its body and act as though it would even rise up at times and when it did thousands of little creatures seemed to run away hideous looking creatures would run away from this giant and when he would become calm they would come back all of a sudden this great giant lifted his hand towards the heavens and then it lifted its other hand and when it did these creatures by the thousands seems to flee away from this giant and go into the darkness and into the night slowly this great giant began to rise and as he did his head and hands went into the clouds as he arose to his feet he seemed to have cleansed himself from the debris and filth that was upon him and he began to raise his hands into the heavens as though praising the lord and as he raised his hands he was it was even unto the clouds suddenly every cloud became silver the most beautiful silver that I have ever known. As I watched this phenomena, it was so great, I could not even begin to understand what it all meant. I was so stirred as I watched it, and I cried unto the Lord, and I said, Oh Lord, what is the meaning of this? And it felt as if I was actually in the Spirit, and I could feel the presence of the Lord, even as I was asleep. And from the clouds, suddenly, there came great drops of liquid light, raining down upon the mighty giant. And slowly, slowly, this giant began to melt, began to sink, as it were, into the very earth itself. And as he melted, his whole form seemed to have melted upon the face of the earth. And this great rain began to come down, liquid drops of light, as it were, began to flood the very earth itself. And as I watched this giant that seemed to melt, suddenly it became millions of people over the face of the earth. As I beheld the sight before me, people stood up all over the world. They were lifting their hands and they were praising the Lord. And that very moment, there came a great thunder that seemed to roar from the heavens. I turned my eyes towards the heavens and I suddenly, and suddenly I saw a figure in white, glistening white, the most glorious thing I have ever seen in my life. I did not see the face, but somehow I knew that it was the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he stretched forth his hand, as he did, 
he would stretch forth his hand upon the peoples and the nations of the world, men and women. As he pointed towards them, this liquid light seemed to flow from his hand into the person, and the mighty anointing of God came upon them. And those people began to go forth in the name of the Lord. I do not know how long I watched. It seemed it went into the days and weeks and months, and I beheld Christ as he continued to stretch forth his hand. But there was a tragedy. There were many people as he stretched forth his hand that refused the anointing of God and the call of God. Now, I want you to know that this anointing is not a special anointing besides the Holy Spirit. Okay, there's only one anointing. It's the Holy Spirit, right? So I saw men and women that I knew, people, that I felt that certainly they would receive the call of God. I have to repeat this. There were many people as he stretched forth his hand that refused the anointing of God and the call of God. I saw men and women that I knew, people that I felt that certainly they would receive the call of God. But as he stretched forth his hand towards this one and towards that one, they simply bowed their heads and began to back away. And to each of those who seem to bow down and back away, they seem to go into darkness. Blackness seemed to swallow them everywhere. I was bewildered as I watched it. But these people that he had anointed, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world, in Africa, Asia, Russia, China, America, all over the world, the anointing of God was upon these people as they went forth in the name of the Lord. Yes, yes, there is special glory. Yes, Lord. I saw these men and women as they went forth. They were ditch diggers. They were washer women. They were rich men and they were poor men. I saw people who were bound with paralysis and sickness and blindness and deafness. And as the Lord stretched forth his hand to give them the anointing, they became well. They became healed and they went forth. Praise Jesus. And this is the miracle of it. This is the glorious miracle of it. Those people who stretched forth their hand exactly as the Lord did. And it seemed that there was the same liquid fire that seemed to be in their hand. As they stretched forth their hand, they said, According to my word, be thou made whole. As these people continued in this mighty end time ministry, I did not fully realize what it was. And I looked to the Lord and I said, What is the meaning of this? And he said, This is that that I will do in the last days. I will restore all the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. I will restore all that they have destroyed. This, my people, in the end time, shall go forth as a mighty army. They will sweep over the face of the earth. Hallelujah. And as I was at a great height, I watched these people as they were going to and fro over the face of the earth. Suddenly, there was a man in Africa, and in a moment, he was transported in the Spirit of God, and perhaps he was in Russia or China or America or some other place, and vice versa. All over the world, these people went, and they came through fire, through persecution, through pestilence and famine. So, know this, that they came through fire, through pestilence, and through famine, Neither fire nor persecution, nothing seemed to stop them. And I want you to know that people that think they are going to be raptured out of here and not have to live any of this, it's a deception. Okay? Read Matthew 24. It confirms what this man is seeing as well. So they came through the fire, the pestilence, and through the famine. That means they're going to live through it. Neither fire nor persecution, nothing seemed to stop them. Angry mobs came to them with swords and with guns, and like Jesus, they passed through the multitude, and they could not find them. But they went forth in the name of the Lord, and everywhere they stretched forth their hand, the sick were healed, the blind eyes were opened, and there was no long prayer. There was no long prayer, no intercession, right? And one of the things that seemed, after I had reviewed the vision so many times in my mind, and I thought about it so many times, I never saw a church, and I never saw or heard a denomination. But these people were going in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. As they marched forward, everything they did as the ministry of Christ in the end time, these people were ministering to the multitudes over the face of the earth, Tens of thousands, even millions, seemed to come to the Lord Jesus Christ as these people stood forth 
and gave the message of the kingdom of a coming kingdom in this last hour it was so glorious god is going to give to the world a demonstration in this last hour such as the world has never known these men and women are of all walks of life degrees will mean nothing i saw these workers as they were going forth over the face of the earth when one would seem to stumble and fall another would come and pick them up there was no big I and little you, but every mountain was brought low and every valley was exalted and they seemed to have one thing in common. There was divine love that seemed to flow forth from these people as they went together, as they worked together, as they lived together. Hallelujah. It was the most glorious thing that I have ever known. Jesus Christ was the theme of the life, of their life. This makes me think of us. It's our team. It's exactly what we're living. As I watched from the very heaven itself, there were times when great delusions of this liquid light seemed to fall upon great congregations. And that congregation would lift their hands and seemingly praise God for hours and even days as the Spirit of God came upon them. God said, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And that is exactly the thing that God was doing. And to every man and to every woman that received this power and the anointing of God, the miracles of God, there was no ending to it. And then again, as these people were going about the face of the earth, a great persecution seemed to come from every end of the earth. Suddenly, there was another cloud, loud clap of thunder that seemed to resound around the world. And I heard again the voice. The voice seemed to speak now this is my people this is my beloved bride and when the voice spoke i looked up i looked upon the earth and i could see the lakes and the mountains the graves were open and people from all over the world the saints of all ages seemed to be rising as they rose from the grave suddenly all these people came from every direction and they seemed to be forming again this gigantic body as the dead in christ seemed to be rising first i could hardly comprehend it it was so marvelous. It was far beyond anything I could ever dream or think of. But as the body suddenly began to form and take shape again, it took shape again in the form of this mighty giant. But this time it was different. It was arrayed in the most beautiful, gorgeous white. Its garments were without spot or wrinkle as the body began to form. And the people of all ages seemed to be gathering into this body and slowly slowly as it began to form up into the heavens suddenly from the heavens above the lord jesus came became the head and i heard another clap of thunder that said this is my beloved bride in who i have waited she will come forth even tried by fire this is she that i have loved from the beginning of time as i watched my eyes suddenly turned to the far north and i saw seemingly destruction men and women in anguish crying out and buildings in destruction and then i heard again the fourth voice that said now is my wrath being poured forth upon the face of the earth from the ends of the whole world the wrath of god seemed to be poured out and it seemed that there were great vials of god's wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth i can remember as it i can remember it as though it happened in a moment ago i shook and trembled as i beheld the awful sight of seeing cities and whole nations going down to destruction i could hear the weeping and the wailing i could hear people crying they seemed to cry as they went into caves but the caves and the mountains opened up and they leaped into water but the water would not drown them there was nothing that seemingly could destroy them they were wanting to take their life but they could not take it then again i turned my eyes unto the body arrayed in the beautiful white garment slowly slowly it began to rise from the earth as it did i awoke i had seen the end time ministry the last hour again on july 27 at 2 20 in the morning the same revelation the same vision came exactly as it did before praise god so i'm absolutely astounded that you know this man 61 years ago had this vision in winnipeg manitoba and here we are in Manitoba in 2022 seeing revival. 58 people got baptized in the past five weeks, month really. 
and it's been incredible and these people are like the ones that I just read to you about they are on fire for the Lord and they are going to do great things great things they are already doing great things they're already out sharing the gospel they're learning how to share the gospel praying for the sick healing the sick and praying for deliverance absolutely amazing so I had a few revelations too recently and one of the dreams that I had it was um about a field of colors and I believe this is just you know confirmation again right we were in this house a one-story house like a bungalow and we were talking you know the group of us and all of a sudden I noticed what I believed was the sunset and how the field and the sky were changing colors and I, I, I went outside and I was looking in the sky I don't even know if it was a sunset but it was like so beautiful colors like red and pink and orange and just like all these shades of pink and even the the field it looked like a field you know like a wheat field it was like pink too and I just excitedly said I said get a camera you know come get a camera take a picture and because the field was so amazing in color and anyway when the person showed up with the camera I just I took the camera and when I turned it was already changed and now it was like this pale pale green but everything was just majestic and green and beautiful and so in the blink of an eye like the whole scenery was just totally transformed into another color and and right after uh, that that was a dream and that day I was looking you know in the Bible I just happened to come across Psalms 96 which says let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad let the sea roar in all its fullness let the field be joyful and all that is in it then all the trees of the woods will rejoice before the Lord for he is coming for he is coming to judge the earth he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth praise God so Psalms 96 11 13 let the field be joyful and all that is in it so that's what I really felt the Lord was you know letting me know that there's signs there's going to be signs physically in the sky and but in a way it's also giving us dreams about things to come and then this was just last night actually so we had a meeting last night it was our last event and during prayer time I had this uh, image this vision of a pillar of fire and you know that the Israelites when they came out of Egypt on the other side of the Red Sea after they went through the water God um, put a, a cloud a pillar of dust uh, like a cloud of dust in the day and a cloud of fire at night so they could travel and they would follow this cloud all the time whether it was day or night and so I saw a pillar of fire in my vision and slowly it moved at first you know then it started to accelerate so it was moving around and then it was just this, a humongous pillar of fire and then it started to move and move quickly and then it became like very uh, a turning like a tornado it became like a great tornado that was just a tornado of fire and it started to move really fast all over the place and as it touched down in certain villages and towns there was like little baby tornadoes starting up everywhere and it was beautiful it was beautiful and I really feel that God was showing me that this is what's happening here and all these people that are going to go out they're on fire and they, they're like these little tornadoes and they will go up and stir up these places all around and these fires will start you know and that's the revival that's the revival that's coming praise God and we are so blessed to be a part of it and you can be a part of it too okay it doesn't have to be bleak there's yes there's there's dark times coming on the earth and you know really I believe there I mean it's prophesied that it's happening or it's gonna happen and I believe the reason why God is allowing this is because he wants call out to him so if you haven't found the truth yet if you haven't called out to Jesus it's not too late so we are about to enter the most exciting time on earth since Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt as far as I'm concerned and how should we prepare well I believe you should prepare by reading the Bible for yourself discover the amazing God of the universe 
get right with them. Recognize that you are a sinner and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord. We are all sinners. We're born into this sinful life and we can't stop. And the only way we can stop is by, by giving it to Jesus. Jesus came to save us from our sins. So Jesus was God who came to the earth to make a way back to the Father because on our own, we cannot stop sinning. And the wages of sin is death. So unless you ask for forgiveness for your sins, you cannot be forgiven and you will die. And it will be a physical death, but a spiritual death as well. Jesus said that we need to be born again. And so if we believe in him, we have faith in him, we will have eternal life. But faith is obedience. And what is obedience? Well, obedience is to the word. And the word actually calls us to be born again. And so what does that mean? It means to repent and be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Look up the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38, 238. So I just want to quickly say that the spiritual birth, being born again, is compared to our first birth. And the only difference is that this one is spiritual. So I explained that to, to people this week and they were just amazed. They were astounded to see, oh, wow, this is what it is. And so, you know, when we are born the first time, when a baby is born, the baby has to turn in the belly make his way out through the water and come out and then you know when he cries out well he's breathing and so he's alive right that's a birth that's a normal birth of a child and when we get born again it's the same kind of thing so repentance is turning away from your old life it's it's that turning away say i don't want this old life i don't want this anymore and confessing your sins and, and turning away and then we we come through the water of baptism. It says, be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. So immerse in the water in the name of Jesus. And the Bible actually says, be washed clean. It says it's also a burial. And so we bury the old life and we come up brand new. So it's like when you come out of the womb, the mother's womb, you're brand spanking new, right? You're, you're clean. There's no sin in you. And it's the same thing if you repent. Be baptized in the water, immerse in the water. There's a spiritual thing that happens where God remembers your sin no more. You're washed clean of your sin. It's a fresh start and you start over in righteousness, right? And so then what do we do? We lay hands on the person and we pray that the person receives the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues. And that's the same thing when the baby comes out, you grab it by the feet, and tap it on the bottom and you make sure that he cries and everything gets out of his lungs and he cries out with new life and new breath and it's the same thing when a person is born again properly repent baptize and then laying of the hands to receive the gift of the holy spirit and to pray in tongues so that's what being born again is really about and so we invite you to bury everything in the water you know you can bury the trauma that you live the rejection unforgiveness that you have in your heart you need to forgive because the Bible is clear if you don't forgive others God won't forgive you anything that you're holding on to keeping you hostage or keeping you slave like sin bury everything and then you have a fresh start no more condemnation no more shame no more guilt no more anxiety fear depression totally set free who the Son sets free is free indeed the Bible says Jesus came to set the captives free and the prisoners right and what's the difference between a prisoner and a captive well a prisoner is guilty of sin and a captive is innocent and that is one of the big things that we have seen here many people were captive they never they weren't all necessarily in sin but we do have to bury the sinful nature that we are born into but still many people were captive the bible says that whoever sins is a slave to sin so we become prisoners to sin but a captive is innocent. A captive is a person who has been taken prisoner or has been confined. And this happens through no fault of your own. It could be through abuse or trauma. So when a child or young person lives some kind of abuse or trauma, well, then they might become a captive to the enemy. Okay. And so you need to be brought out of that. And Jesus, I think it was in Matthew, he said, the spirit of the Lord, Lord God is upon me. 
because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Hallelujah. And this is what Jesus came to do. And this is what we are meant to do as born again believers. We are called to go out, preach the good news um, of the gospel, and set the captives free, right? Heal the brokenhearted, heal the sick, and deliver the captives as well. Baptize them into the name of Jesus, get them born again into God's kingdom. Praise God. So that's what it's all about. So I really hope, uh, pray that this message bless you tonight and that it inspires you. And you know, there's amazing things that's going on in, in this world right now. And you can, you know, it's like God gave me this revelation too a few weeks ago. He's like, there's the fake news and there's the true news. And then there's the good news. And the good news is Jesus Christ. And that's what you want to keep your eyes on. Never mind the fake and never mind the real you know, keep your eyes on the good news of Jesus Christ that he is coming soon. Get to work in his kingdom. And the joy, the joy that we have just to be alive today and to be a part of what's happening in the world. I mean, there's no, there's, there's no greater joy than that. Nobody could pay me enough to, to stop doing what I'm doing for the Lord. Because to see somebody who was just, you know, deaf and now can hear, depressed and now is full of joy. And somebody that was bound to sin and now was set free. There's no money anybody could ever give me to make me stop doing this work for the Lord. Because it's so rewarding to see people set free. So that's, that's what God wants for all of us. He's inviting all of us to be part of this end time ministry. So that's it. So God bless you. And if you have questions or you need, you need prayer, you need, you know, deliverance or whatever, write me. I will do my best to, to help connect you with someone and, uh, and bear with me. It's not always easy because we have been so busy and we're going on like six hours of sleep a night. And so pray for us that we can stay strong and be strengthened to be protected from the evil one because you know we are doing a lot of damage in the kingdom of darkness. All right. Praise God. So good night. I love you all. And I'll see you next week. God willing. Bye-bye.